Hello, my dear. I'm Dr. Alam Musbah, Professor of Obstetrics and Gynecology, Faculty of Medicine, Mansoura University. Let us try to discuss a case scenario today as an ask station in obstetrics. Okay. Let us try to read the case scenario, then we will answer some questions. Ibrahim Gravida, 21 year old, presented in the antenatal care clinic at 38 weeks of gestation. Her blood pressure measured 160 over 110 millimercury. Obstetric examination revealed single fetus cephalic presentation, uterus 32 weeks size, on on auscultation, fetal heart sound is 140 beats per minute. Urine analysis revealed 2 plus proteinuria. This is the case scenario. Then we are going to answer some question related to this case scenario. What is the obstetric diagnosis in such case? Full obstetric diagnosis in such a case. How do you diagnose IGR clinically? How do you confirm the presence of IGR? What is the treatment of such a case? Okay, let us start with the first question What is the obstetric diagnosis in such a case? You can pick it up from the case scenario. I can say this is a primary gravida, pregnant 38 weeks, longitudinal like phallic presentation. Okay. With single tune fetus. With normal fetal heart sound, complicated by IUR and severe preeclampsia. So, primary gravida, 38 weeks gestation, cephalic presentation, IUR and severe preeclampsia. Why I said IUR? and severe preeclampsia because the gestational age is 38 weeks while on examination uterus was only 32 weeks size so this is a small for gestational age for differential diagnosis and one of them is IGR why I said preeclampsia also because there is blood pressure 160 over 110 and there is 2 plus proteinuria together with IGR and the oligohydramnus and suggested oligohydramnus also we can say this is a severe preeclampsia and we know that severe preeclampsia is associated with IGR usually okay so that's why I said this full obstetric diagnosis Primary gravida, 38 weeks, phallic presentation, IUR severe reclass. Okay, this is as regard the first part of our quiz today. The second question is how do you diagnose IUR clinically? I can diagnose IUR clinically by measuring the symphysis fundal height if it if it is lower than the gestational age we call it small for gestational age and one of them is IGR symphysis fundal height by measuring the tap starting from symphysis pubis up to the top of the fundus the upper part of the fundus equal in centimeter to that of gestational age
or by measuring by pundal level clinically and consider each one finger as a one week as we know that at symphysis pubis it is 12 weeks gestational age at the sternum it is 36 weeks and so on. so how to diagnose clinically by measuring symphysis pundal height what else decrease the amount of lycra the volume of lycra is reduced when you examine the lady abdominally you find the amniotic fluid is reduced the lycra volume is reduced also fetal mass is reduced what else abdominal girth may be decreased or the same the whole abdominal girth is reduced usually okay what else clinically no increase in body weight during the pregnancy in the previous few visits when the, the lady measure her body weight there is no increase okay this is another sign of IGR. so clinically as i said I know the gestational age from last normal menstruation and from the antenatal record. Then I examined the abdomen. I did symphysis frontal height measurement. I found discrepancy. 38 weeks by last menstrual period, while 32 weeks clinically by symphysis frontal height. Okay, or frontal level. So this discrepancy I should respect and I call it small for gestational age and because the woman has a severe preeclampsia I consider IGR as a one reason also oligohydraminous is associated with small for gestational age in differential diagnosis okay so this is the answer how to diagnose IGR clinically okay okay the next question how do you confirm the presence of IGR clinically I suggest there is IGR to confirm you should do ultrasound and the fetal biometry by measuring the piperital diameter head circumference femur length abdominal circumference and also measure the ratio of head circumference and abdominal circumference okay for example in asymmetric IGR the head circumference abdominal circumference ratio is expected to be more than one after 34 weeks gestational age okay so I need to do fetal biometry what else also I, I need to do measuring of amniotic fluid index if it is less than five this is mean oligohydramnus what else Doppler velocimetry Doppler velocimetry for umbilical artery if the systolic blood flow is reduced absent or reversed this is means fetal rebirth this fetus at risk okay and this can happen with placental ischemia placental insufficiency that may happen with preeclampsia and so on so how to how do you confirm the presence of IGR by ultrasound fetal biometry head circumference vibrator diameter abdominal circumference humor lens expected fetal weight also of course expected fetal weight reduce small smaller than expected is a sign of IGR then the amniotic fluid index then the ratio also between head circumference and the abdominal circumference as I mentioned before and Doppler velocimetry for umbilical artery 
as I said, it may be reduced or absent or reverse it. And this is the most dangerous one. Okay, let us go to the next. What is the treatment of such case? Of course, this is a case of severe preeclampsia with IUGR, and she is 38 weeks gestational age. I want her to control blood pressure and do my physical profile for the baby, fetal monitoring, then take a decision to terminate the pregnancy, either vaginal or cesarean section. If there is obstetric indication for cesarean section, I do cesarean section, elective cesarean section. If there is no obstetric indication for cesarean section, I'll do induction of labor, especially if the cervix was favorable for induction. But don't take a long journey in such condition because you have a case with severe preeclampsia and IUR. So it may be dangerous if the labor take a long time. So if you, are going, if you are going to do induction of labor, if the cervix is favorable for induction, you are going to do close monitoring for the fetal heart sound, CTG, Continuous CTG is important in such a case because it is a high risk case. And to follow the progress of labor. If there is progress normally, okay, continue for vagin, vaginal delivery. If any uh, acute fetal breast, fetal distress developed uh, during induction of labor or any indication for cesarean section, you are going to change your decision to do cesarean section. So, control blood pressure first, do the physical profile for the baby, and the fetal heart rate monitoring. Of course, you should do the investigation for preeclampsia, like CBC, serum creatinine, liver enzymes. All of these should be done at heart. Okay? Then take decision of termination of pregnancy, either vaginal or cesarean section. This is the answer of last question. What is the treatment of such case? Control hypertension, do all investigations immediately, biophysical profile for the, for the pregnancy, then termination either vaginal or cesarean section if cervix is favorable for induction go on with vaginal delivery if cervix is not favorable or there is obstetric indication for cesarean do elective cesarean section this is the end of this ASCII as a case scenario discussion I hope it was helpful for you Thank you, everybody. For, to find more ASCII quizzes, obstetric and the gynae lectures, you can find it on my site on YouTube. I'll put it in a comment, this one. If you wanted to search for my box on Amazon, it is in this link. I'll put it in another comment. I hope this ASCII was helpful for you. My best wishes for all of you. Thank you.